And today we're doing two recipes in one. It's going to be pasta alfredo and ravioli. For both the cream sauce for the pasta as well as the filling for the ravioli, I'm going to use the same cheese. Half cashew, half um, pine nuts. And, um, and with that cheese, we're gonna add just garlic, nutritional yeast, and water. Then I'm going to add the rest of these lovely Italian um, herbs. Uh, I have parsley, tarragon, parsley garlic, and uh, parsley sprouts. Let's start first by making the pasta. This zucchini is going to be um, our pasta, and this watermelon turnip I made um, into thin slices is going to be our wrapper for the ravioli. This zucchini is so much like pasta, it's ridiculous. I'm going to show you how you can get it that way in just a minute. And the wrapper for the ravioli, I'm going to be using uh, watermelon turnip, thinly sliced. You can use really any wrapper, like any beet or subtle flavored turnip. Okay, so first I'm going to do the pasta. I peeled it already and I cut off either side. It's pretty imperative you use a mandolin for the wrappers, for the ravioli wrappers, because you want them thin. I guess you could get away with slicing this thin, doing the hard way, but mandolin is cheap. The, a great brand um, for a great one costs $65. So I set it to my mandolin on the thinnest it goes, and then I'm just swiping it on the mandolin until I get to the seeds. You want to flip it over and then start slicing on the other side and being very careful not to cut your hands. I just flipped it over to check. I still have some ways to go before I get to the seeds. And then I flip it and again and get the sides now. I lost an attachment on my mandolin, so I'm going to have to do the next step by hand. But basically, I'm just takes, I just take all the slices and put them in a pile as evenly as I can. And then I slice them um, lengthwise into um, pasta shape. So I was, what is it, linguine. I like it like linguine. And then slice. And then we're gonna add those to a bowl. So that they can marinate and this is how um, you make the zucchini into um, pasta like texture. I add a little salt and a, just a drizzle of olive oil. Okay and then gently Mix it up in there with your hands. And then you want to set it aside. And while that's cooking, I'm going to work on our cheese. So half a cup cashews and the half cup pine nuts. I got a garlic clove here somewhere. Boom. Oh, uh, rosemary. I forgot to mention rosemary. I'm going to add rosemary to little bit of that. Nutritionally yeast and water. Okay, here we go. Now our pasta is finished. So after just a few minutes inside the salt, and the little bit of olive oil, you see our pasta is very pliable now. Just like cooked al dente pasta. Oh my god, it's so good. Looks so delicious. Okay, then, so to that, we're going to add our white sauce. Oh, I have a little bit of bikini water. You want to drain that first so you don't have too runny of pasta. I forgot to tell you. Um, a little bit more cheese. Okay. Mm. I mean, this looks like <laughs> egg noodles. And tastes like it too. It's crazy. 
to that, I'm going to start adding the parsley, garlic, mix it around. The inside of the zucchini you can save for a salad later. If you use tongs, you can make it really fancy the way restaurants do. I normally avoid using steel to steel contact, but okay. Uh, to this, we're going to, I saved the best for last. I call this my monosodium glutamate because everything monosodium glutamate goes in supposedly tastes better. And this is my version of monosodium glutamate. It's finely minced garlic, parsley, olive oil, and a little bit of sea salt sprinkled on top. And then I dehydrate it until it's soft. It's the equivalent to gently sauteed garlic and parsley. It's delicious. <laughs> My goodness. And it's so flavorful. Oh my gosh. Um, so I just want to sprinkle a little bit around because it's so good. You want to get a little bite, a little bit in every bite. Um, tarragon. Tarragon is a very um, important spice in pasta alfredo. So there we go with the tarragon. We've got garlic already in there. And just for, you know, some decoration, make it pretty, you can um, add um, thinly sliced green onions. They taste really, they go well in it. And at the market I got some, I was able to find some parsley sprouts. So I picked up some of those. So beautiful around the dish. Um, I may as well add some flowers from my garden. And, I mean, that's Italian. And hang on, I only got, I got my thing um, that makes it look even better. Some red pepper flakes just add to it. It's just, oh, it's so good. Talk about amazing. I got some cheese in a bowl, the same cheese that we used for the Alfredo. And you're going to add what you typically add to cheese ravioli filling, which is garlic, parsley, a little salt, and some cracked pepper. Delicious. My goodness. My oh gosh. It doesn't get much delicious than this. Okay, and to that, take a dollop of cheese, put it on your paper thin wrapper, as thin as you can slice it on your mandolin, and then cover it with another wrapper. And repeat the process. This is a fun yellow chioga beet right here. Uh, they taste good um, with the ravioli as well. Um, red beet is good also. This is watermelon turnip I'm using. It's excellent. All these beets are, have a, a rather subtle flavor, which is what I go for when I'm trying to find the perfect ravioli wrap because I don't want it to take, I don't want it to be too bitter and take over the ravioli. Now that we have our dollop of cream on each wrapper, I'm going to cover them. You want them thin so that they're uh, pliable. If you have them a little too thick, they will soften up in the dehydrator, but I like to get them real thin from the start. You don't want to press in the center because you don't want to um, press the, the filling. You don't want it to ooze out. So I just gently press on the sides. And I need two, I'm out of two wrappers. Okay. So um, afterward, I just take a little brush with a little olive oil and gently brush each top. And that's so that the, the top of the ravioli doesn't dry out. Keeps it nice and soft. 
just like a real ravioli wrapper would be. Now we're going to take this to the dehydrator. And pop it in for anywhere between two and six hours or even more if you want a crunchy one. I'm going to put my temperature up to 118 for three hours. One, two, three. So our raviolis are ready and I'm just going to plate them now. Now my cheese came out a little thin. Um, I highly suggest you make the cheese come out thicker. If you follow my recipe below, you will have thicker cheese. I just added a little bit too much water. I'm showing how this can be a meal, an actual meal. Okay. Very filling indeed. Now we're gonna make the plate pretty. This is basil, shishito basil from the Sprout Guy at the Farmer's Market. Love my Sprout Guy. An amazing crepe type flower, pansy. Now that's Italian. So here we are, two awesome Italian dishes, ravioli and pasta. They look like the real stuff. They taste even better because it's pure, clean ingredients. And it doesn't leave you with a gut bomb afterward. It actually helps your body do what your body needs to do. And on that note, I wish you all the best of health and have a wonderful rest of the day.